Okay, to be conscious of everyone's time, we want to thank you for coming to the last um, OL panel focused on engagement um, and campus life. Um, so thanks for being with us here on a Wednesday morning for people who are in Hawaii. Um, so of course, you folks know the drill of you should be able to hear me. If you cannot, we can troubleshoot with you in the chat. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll try to help you out. And let's just go ahead and get started. Yeah. Okay. So first we will have um, Ashley start off with um, introduce yourself, um, your name, your major, um, and where you are originally from. Good morning. I'm Ashley Terrell. I'm a DAP student at the Shadler Business School, double majoring in international business and marketing, and I'm from Pleasanton, California. Hi guys. Oh, oh, oops, sorry, me. Okay, so <laughs> hi everyone. My name is Duyen. I'm one of the orientation leaders. Um, my major is psychology and biology, and I'm originally from Vietnam, but I moved here at a very young age. I'm sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. <clears throat> but hi everyone, my name is Jessica. Um, I'm a dental hygiene major, psychology minor, and I'm originally from here. I was born and raised here in Oahu. Hello, everyone. I'm Lila Rice. I'm a secondary education major focusing in English, and I'm originally from New Jersey. Hey, everyone. My name is Mateo. I'm a made, double majoring in public health and English, and I'm from Arcadia, California. Okay, thanks so much. So as you folks know, you've probably seen them on Instagram or throughout the webinar. So hopefully um, you've also been connecting with them um, your, at your OLWs. Um, so as a reminder, those are today. So you can hang out with your leader even more later or you may have already done that. Okay, um, if folks can go on to number two or question number two, what is one thing you are excited for this upcoming year? I'm really excited to finally have an in-person class. Um, I haven't like gone to explore campus that much except for Campus Center because Starbucks and the Rec Center are there. So I'm excited to finally like have a lecture and to do things and have that like college experience that I didn't get because of Zoom. <laughs> um, for me, I think it's more of just, well, I still have, um, online classes so unfortunately that won't be um, going back in person for me but I think it's just going back to school again and like going into lab and just interacting more with people and having a little bit more of like in-person event um, hopefully that lasts yeah. um, so I, I have a job on campus so I've been like I've just been going to campus every week but um, I, since I've just gotten to the dental hygiene program, I'm really excited to, to start there. Because <laughs> uh, I've been, yeah, I applied last year in, um, during 2020, but of course COVID hit, so they, they delayed the process. And so, yeah, I'm excited for all the new things I get to learn this year. And I guess to meet my classmates, that'll be fun. Yeah, I'm definitely very excited to be on campus again. It's my junior year, so um, I haven't really been on it for a while, and I miss like seeing everybody's faces because we do have such a beautiful campus. So it's one of the things I look forward to, like walking through the trees and seeing the buildings. And I think we have a couple like new buildings that went up, so I'm like really excited to go and check them out and everything like that. But I'm also really excited for football games because they're now on campus, and that's like a great way to um, meet people. So I'm very excited that it's uh, easy to get there this time because when I was a freshman, it was like 25 minutes away. So we're definitely really lucky. Uh, for me, one thing I'm really excited about is starting an internship at the Hawaii Public Health Institute. Um, it was something that I applied for a couple months ago and I've been waiting on a response and they recently just got back to me um, telling me that they wanted to work with me. So I'm really excited for that and being able to do what I wanna do in terms of uh, public health administration um, and then teamwork as well. I think that that's going to um, help me a lot in the future. Nice. Love hearing all these excitements and all 
that was bad grammar. Okay, next question. Um, how did you start to engage with campus and um, provide examples of what you are involved in? One of the first things I did freshman year was join a club within Shidler Business School, so American Marketing Association. I got a lot of like recommendations from like sophomores and juniors to join it as like an easy business club to like just meet people and kind of like get to know. Um, they have like a lot of guest speakers come in too, so it was like a pretty like chill Zoom to like just get to hang out. And then I also rushed um, for a sorority in Greek life in my fall of freshman year. And like two months afterwards, I ran to be a VP and now I'm like VP of administration with my sorority and we're working on recruitment this year again. And so it was really just exciting to already take on leadership roles um, as a freshman because that was something that I definitely like went into college trying to do. For me, it's a little bit of a different story. Um, when I first got to college, I was not academically doing well therefore I felt like I should have really focused on my academic career and then after that when I felt like I had everything more under control which honestly did take me a really long time so I don't think I really got fully involved like in clubs and stuff until my junior or end of sophomore year somewhere around there um, and then I started just to um, finally being able to handle my academic career that comes first and then after that I was able to join more clubs be more involved on campus um, one of the roles that I recently took up was in an honor society which is if anyone is interested it's really it looks really good on your resume so we are we are also recruiting as well <clears throat> for me um, same as Dee and I didn't start joining clubs or getting engaged that much with campus life till um, around junior year as well mostly because I was shy and I didn't want to like join clubs on my own so I didn't join till like my friends started joining but honestly um, it was also yeah I was too shy and I didn't know like what I was doing so I didn't I wasn't sure where I was going with my academic career so I didn't join any clubs yet because I wasn't sure if I was going to be staying in what major I um, originally was. Um, so I didn't start joining mostly towards junior and senior year because I was um, I was more sure because I was going towards dental hygiene and I was able to join clubs like Beta, which is a service volunteer club um, and PMA. And even though like it's it's like you know the med it's pre medical association so it's different from dental hygiene, I'm glad I joined it anyway because I got to experience a lot of vol um, volunteer things and uh, I also joined a lot of honor societies in my senior year. It's kind of late, but you know better late than never. But um, I learned that like it's okay to be shy because everybody there is really nice. Like somebody will talk to you and then you open up and you make new friends. So it's honestly better just to just join and then like you, you'll feel better about it. Uh, one way that I like met people and like got engaged with campus life and everything was I did intramural sports. So that was like a really fun way to make friends. And like, I think like my whole team was a part of like, they were all in the same class or something. So I like got to meet all them, although like I wasn't in the same class, like it was really fun. Because even if you join, I joined with one other friend, but even if you join by yourself, they throw you on a team and everyone's just like super, super nice. Like Jessica was saying about the clubs, like that's the one thing I can't remember me doing. I didn't join any clubs because I also was like, oh, I'm not sure like if I want to and stuff like that. And my one like word of advice would definitely be do it, like get involved, meet new people, do the clubs because like COVID hit and I wish that I had just done them my first semester and like that would have been really fun and I missed an opportunity there. So I hope that you guys uh, jump on that and do it right away because it's a great way to meet friends and get involved. So for me, honestly, when I, my first year at UH, I really just wanted to take it easy, kind of and start enjoying life at the beginning um, and make friends. And honestly, there's always time to do that. Um, you're never going to have a lack of time to make friends and go to the beach and do whatever you want to. Um, but I think if you just spend a couple hours out of your day looking into campus jobs, looking into clubs, um, or exploring like study abroad opportunities, I think you'll find something um, really worth your time. 
And for me, I didn't really join much of anything my first year, but if I had, if I had looked, if I had found what I wanted to do in terms of my major sooner, I would have joined the public health club, which I'm in now before, because I think doing, getting involved in a club that has to do with your major is one thing that you can do to help yourself right away. Um, so you can get connected with um, your peers and also professors um, and people like all in your field as well so that you can make these valuable connections. Super good points. And um, I think folks have said it before. Um, everyone is scared when they first start getting involved. Just know that um, everyone kind of goes that with goes into each little organization or um, engagement opportunity a little bit fearful of like, oh my God, this is a new thing for me. Um, so just know everyone has been in your place and just get involved where you can and, but also don't overextend yourself too. Okay, next question. So kind of along the same vein of how do you folks manage your time? Um, are there strategies that you use to do both academics and um, other parts of your life. I've found that it's very easy to kind of like get distracted with like school and life and the beach being at UH. One time I ran into someone at Waikiki and I was like, oh yeah, I'm a student at UH. And they're like, oh, I used to be too. But then I started island hopping and I dropped out. And so uh, my dad, he kind of knew that I would have that same mentality of I need to stay focused and remember that I need to attend classes. And so once a week he like checks in on me um, and now I just use my phone and my calendar for everything. I set up like 30 minutes and then a 15 minute alert for every class or every event or even this panel <laughs> that I had to come to. So that way I have a half hour from like, if I'm out of like, from away from my laptop, I can drive there and then 15 minutes to log on really quick. So using my phone and setting up alerts cause it's always on me has been something that really helps me with making sure I attend my classes. But then also I do like to schedule into my calendar too, like, hey, I'm gonna go get lunch with this person. So it's not just academics on my phone. I have like other events, like I'm getting dinner tonight. So I saw the alert already on there this morning and now I'm excited. So definitely seeing it like visually in timetables has helped me kind of manage like my hours of the day. So same thing um, with Ashley. I also have a Google calendar, which looks very crazy but then i understand it because it has everything laid out for me so right now i'm i'm juggling having a job and going to school and when we start going into summer school is so it's very important for um to just understand like oh you have this amount of time set out for your school and not just your for your classes but also for your homework and classwork and tests and studying as well so I also build in um, study times into my schedule so I know oh, I should be like catching up on work because having a full time job and going to school is not something a lot of students do. I don't suggest it though. So. It seems like Jessica might be frozen, so I'll, I'll go ahead and when she's back, she she can go. But um, one way that I stay focused with school is I also like to write everything down. Um, the phone, that's really smart. Maybe I'll look into that, but I think I'm like old school. I like to write everything into a planner and uh, look at that and use like some stickers and whatnot to keep me motivated. But um, I'm an English major, so most of my assignments are writing long papers. So I normally like to do that like early in the morning or like really, like really, really late at night. So like people are doing other things when I have to sit down and write my papers. But um, like Mateo said, like if you're not an English major and you have like other responsibilities and stuff, the beach, the beach is always there. So you really don't have to worry about like missing out because if it's you now, it's someone else later. Like it's always a rotation of what friends are there and what friends are not and who's studying for tests and who's got homework and whatnot. So definitely don't worry about that and don't have like um, going to the beach be your like, like that can maybe be like your reward, like get this done and maybe I can go to the beach. Or, like maybe I can go out to dinner with my friends. Like 
definitely like use that as a way to like motivate you to stay in school and get your academics for like done first because that is what's most important we're just lucky to be going like to school in a great place like this but it still is school so you want to make sure you're on your game okay thanks for going yeah i was like lagging i was like oh no but um just like everybody else has been saying um having a calendar having google calendar and writing everything down really helps i have a samsung so Google, like my Google calendar is like a widget on my phone. Oh my God, it's a lifesaver. I have like a fish brain, so I forget everything. So I have to schedule like literally every, every event going on in my life. Like if it's, if I'm going to hang out tomorrow, I'm like, oh, I'm hanging out tomorrow. And I have to like, like Ashley said, I have to set an alarm. And I also do um, intervals too. I do like 20, 15, and then 10. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I always, um, if I'm watching a video or I'm doing homework, I, I'll forget about the event in like 20 minutes. So I have to like set intervals. But yeah, um, Google Calendar is really helpful because you can schedule your like your start um, school schedule, class schedule right into Google Calendar, and then um, whatever I don't know club events you have, you should schedule that too, so that you just know when you'll have free time to do other things. It's a lifesaver. I forget everything, you know. So Google Calendar, the best. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with everyone else's points about Google Calendar. Like, I use that all the time super helpful to put in your classes and all the other important stuff you have to do. Um, for me, I took a lot more of like a hypothetical approach. Like it took me some time to realize like what works for me the best. So when are the hours out of the day that I have the most energy? And that's when you wanna do the things that require the most thinking. So like if you have, there's still a lot of classes that are asynchronous classes. So you wanna plan those the work for those classes during the hours where you have the most energy. So whether that's early in the morning or mid afternoon or later at the nighttime. Um, so like whichever one works for you the best. Um, and then also like planning your day around your classes as well, if, if you can. So like you want your, if you want your classes to be in the middle of your day, instead of at the beginning, then you want to plan to schedule your classes then. But if you don't have that opportunity, then you just want to fit in time to do your homework and also do the other things that you want to do, let's say, like if you want to exercise or if you want to go uh, meet with your professor, or if you want to do something extracurricular, um, then you got to work those things in when you when you find time. Um, I think for me, it was like if you can take like a week or two to find out like where like where your energy level is at during parts of the day then you'll start to realize like, oh, this is the best time for me to do this. Nice, nice. Okay, next question. Um, what is your favorite campus acti activity that you recommend? Honestly, when I first uh, came to UH and the gym was still closed, and I had never been to Oahu before and never to the campus. My favorite thing to do was to like do my morning runs like around campus and get to explore it myself, get to like walk around, get to know the buildings and give myself like my own little tour for the first time. Um, I thought that was like kind of like fun and it turned out to be something that like my whole like dorm floor <laughs> started joining me for. So it was a good way to like meet people and then we just started doing walks around campus, visiting all of their buildings, finding out what their majors are, visiting the Shiler building, learning about where I'm gonna go to class. <laughs> so definitely, if you are coming to campus and you've never been here because of the pandemic, like taking your mornings and making your workout into a tour is something I definitely recommend. Um, for me, it's definitely, like unfortunately everything was um online so there's not much like interactions you can physically have with people but i feel like joining a club that requires a lot of like um some in-person interaction like volunteering on site or uh doing community service on site i feel like that's just a good way to like you know take a break from your laptop from your computer step outside go help out the community i feel like that was something I look forward to um, in the clubs that I join. Whenever we have in-person activity, I'll be like the first one to sign up for it because I'm like, oh, this is the break that I need. 
um, a favorite campus activity well, before COVID hit at least um, uh, the, the school activity board, they would do a lot of events and those are really fun because you could win prizes and you could interact with other students and you know make friends and stuff. So it, they're still doing events and stuff, but it's on Instagram. So, you know, you should do that if, if you have a chance. But yeah, like before COVID hit, that was probably my favorite campus activity. Now though, like there aren't any activities that you can do, but just walking around. Yeah, like Ashley said, just walking around is nice because there aren't too many people, but it's, it's enough that it's not like too like lonely or scary to walk on campus, at least in the morning. So just um, acclimating yourself to the campus or like just relaxing and just taking walks is good. I would say my favorite campus activity, it might sound like strange, but I just like like going to class and walking around and like seeing everybody like doing the same thing I was doing, like waking up early and like some people have got like smiles on their faces and some people are just like, I don't want to like go to class right now, but we're all like in the same boat and definitely with being online, I'd say like that's something that I know like a majority of people really miss, like being able to go to class. Like I bet there'll be a lot more like smiles next time you're going to class because it's been so long since we've been all able to. So I would definitely say that um, that's something that I really enjoy doing on campus just because it's something that I miss a lot. One thing that um, that I started to get into uh, after the first COVID lockdown when I was on campus um, when the gym started reopening, I started to go there a lot more. And I think I used to go there at the beginning of the day. And I'm a huge believer of getting your morning started the right way. Cause I think that like the way that your morning goes sets the tone for the rest of the day. So if you have like a bad morning and something goes wrong, then it might just like snowball and like the rest of the day might be kind of bad. But if you can, if you can do everything you can to get your morning started the right way, whether it's exercise, um, whether you get a cup of coffee or if you don't like coffee, then tea. Um, if you go, like to go on a walk, if you like to read. Um, so like just just finding something healthy to do in the morning is like a huge thing. But for me, it was definitely the rec center. Actually, and a question just came in. So Mateo, along the same vein of the rec center. So does the campus have a rock climbing gym? No, but... Is it in commission, the little rock wall? I don't know. Okay. Um, it wasn't when I left, um, and I don't think it was open during the summer. And then there's there's kind of new restrictions now in terms of gyms being open 50%. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think that they'll be opening that anytime soon, but it could change yeah. Uh, yeah. next semester probably. And there are rock climbing gyms around um, like town. And I know there's some in like Nililani too. So I would encourage that person to just, this is going to sound bad, but like, honestly, Yelp is probably super, probably the best way or place to start. Um, but yeah, thanks for that question. And then if folks do have questions for the leaders, you're more than welcome to utilize the Q and A function. Um, and then, and then we'll, um, get to it at the end. Um, okay, what has been your most memorable experience on campus? I really liked move-in day. Um, two of my roommates are already in there when I moved in uh, in the fall last year, but I just like seeing everyone's like parents and seeing their different expressions of like, are they stressed? Are they happy to be away from home for a couple months? <laughs> Um, I really liked move-in day. My mom wasn't able to join me because of like COVID. And so my dad was carrying her on FaceTime on like a tripod with my phone the entire time trying to show her my new room. And um, the one of the first things I did was my dad and I we went to Leonard's, picked up a dozen and, of Malasadas, put them at like the end of my hall in Freer and said, hey, my Instagram is this, pick up a free Malasada. And I made some friends and got dinner with them that night. So yeah. Food and high fives go such a long way. So if you're into like malasadas, like if you want to buy someone to poke, that's always like the go to. For me, there is not a specific like pinpoint day, but I think for me it was definitely joining like, I, well, one of my favorite memories is joining Vita and being able to go on a trip to Guatemala. It's like a health mission trip. So that was 
really fun and it's like an eye-opening experience for me because like you see what we have here versus what they have there and it kind of like lets you reflect on life and I don't know it was just a great trip overall I really enjoyed that trip Uh, I personally don't have like one like super memorable experience I think it's just like all of them like gathered together but I used to study with my friends on campus and I would like those are really fun because like you know even though studying is not fun um just being there with your friends and knowing like you're all going through the same thing and then um taking breaks with them and just fooling around um and getting food together was really fun um and like I like it just feels better to be with your friends and study on campus than just study at home so those are really fun for me I would say memorable moments for me in the beginning of my college career would be when I would go to like football games or um, right before COVID hit, we all went to like the volleyball game with BYU and it was like crazy. Like I'm sure anyone that like Mateo shaking said, like it was insane and it was so fun and everyone's like screaming and like, it doesn't matter who you're around, everyone's just there for the same reason. So it's really fun and it's a good way to get involved and you can meet a bunch of people, but it's really fun. And it's like something that when you leave then you can like talk about with people and it was just really, and I mean, we won, so that was nice, but it was just like really, it was really like fun and and like getting involved and stuff like that. Like the first football game um, that you can get to on campus, I definitely would go because that's where I met like half my friends, like definitely get involved and like go to the sports games if you like sports because they are very fun. I think for me, it was, a, a there was a period of time after I, I broke my foot, um, I got to see a lot of things on campus that I wouldn't have experienced like if I was just normally walking around like I got to utilize the shuttle because I never thought that I was going to need to use a shuttle so I take the shuttle from from um, right outside a QLC all the way back to the dorms. Um, and then a lot of a lot of the time people would come and carry my backpack and walk with me to class It'd usually be my friends but sometimes I get like random people that would do it. Um, like people would hold doors open for me at the calf and like sometimes or there was one time when someone offered to like get my food for me at the cafeteria so that I could sit down. Um, so it was like a blessing and a curse having a broken foot, but I got to learn a lot of things and uh, experience the kind of caring community that we have on campus as well. Thanks for bringing that up, Mateo. Yeah, everyone on campus is super happy, very caring. Um, if people are lost, especially during the first week, if you have in-person classes, just ask. Like everyone is more than willing to show you where Bilger is or even where Scheidler is. If you've never been on campus and you're walking from the residence hall all the way up to Scheidler, leave like at least 20 minutes early and um, you're probably gonna be sweating, but hey, so is everyone else. Um, Okay, where is your favorite place on campus? And it can be virtual or it can be, because um, I know folks are you know, back and forth, but um, it can either be a virtual space or an actual place on campus. My favorite place on campus is like the sustainability garden right by Kirkendall Hall. So it's like maybe a one minute walk from campus center. So it still is like really close to like go pick up my Starbucks but then it's like a little bit quieter than campus center if I actually want to like get work done. And my favorite like piece of, or my favorite part about that like little space is that there was this rooster who was super chill. I would show up with my laptop and my Starbucks grilled cheese and he would like sit on the table right next to me and never eat it. I named him Tyrannosaurus Pex. Um, so T-Pex, <laughs> I'm really proud of that. But yeah, that was like my favorite thing. Um, there's so much wildlife on campus <laughs> that I was never used to from California. And so seeing chickens and roosters was so cool to me and making friends with them was really fun for me. Okay, for me, I'll share two spaces, one during regular hours and one after hours. And I know it sounds so weird, but then, um, so my favorite place, like normally when campus starts is at um i recently really like lsb because that's where i do my research is a really new building so you know utilize it while you can they have great study spaces um but back then before covid started and when we study on campus like really late at night i like to go into one of the um 
business rooms that are open for students to use if you guys don't know that yeah, at night so you and your friends can just go in there use the room use the monitor and they don't really care and then um, at a certain time they'll come by and remind you oh we're gonna close up soon so you guys can leave so that's like a really nice place to be on your own and just study there or have a small group of friends bring food in study in there it's amazing I love that place I agree. The business rooms were great. Um, my favorite place on campus is probably um, Paradise Palms because that's where like my friends and I would stop by in between classes and meet up for like lunch or like snack, snack breaks. <laughs> but yeah, like just meet up in between classes <laughs> um, and chill. And it was like AC all the time. So it was, you know, like Hawaii's always hot. So yeah, AC is always the best and they always have AC and they have good food. They had Dunkin'. So we would always just get coffee or tea and stuff like that. Um, and there were like really long tables. So we could just like sit with our small group or if we had more friends come in, we could just all have a long table. Currently though, um, it's probably just oh, where I work, <laughs> the information technology service building because it also has AC, but I just chill there every day. But a good place with, it would be campus center just because they have a lot of like seating areas there's a lot of people so you don't feel as lonely but you can still sit by yourself yeah i would say uh one of my favorite places on campus i have so many because it's just so beautiful i keep stressing that but i would say the pool i work at it i know someone asked like if uh people like anyone can just swim there are free swim hours like in the middle of the day and also at night and i just like it there because we allow people to jump off the diving boards and um, it's really fun to like just see random people like like having fun and like bringing their friends and like I know I always tell my friends like while I'm working like hey like please come to the pool because like it's more fun when I'm like watching people I know swim I feel like but um, I really like it there because on my days off that I'm not working I can still go to the pool and jump off the diving boards and that's always like a lot of fun because that's one of my like favorite things to do so I definitely like the pool because it's a nice place. The, the seating area outside Starbucks for me was definitely the, it was my go-to because on the days where like I didn't want to go out and find people on campus, that's where everyone walks through. So if you're just sitting out there, someone you know is going to see you and talk to you or find you. And like, I think that was a great spot for me. Just, it felt kind of like therapeutic for me because it was, it wasn't too loud but then if you wanted to talk to someone, then someone would come talk to you or you can find someone sitting out there. And like, it was a good spot to just be centralized on campus. And so like, you're in the middle of everything. Um, so you can get to your classes, you can go get food. And so it just felt very calm and um, like friendly, a friendly space. I think all of my favorite places on campus, all of y'all touched it. I haven't been in the life sciences building, but I will make my way soon. Okay, um, let us know if you attended any virtual events or activities, and if you did, how did it go? So my entire like sorority recruitment process was online in the fall for primary recruitment, um, but it was still like really exciting because we still got our small groups and I still got to like text other people being like, what are you wearing today? Do I look okay? Are you practicing questions? I don't know this people's philanthropy. I'm so lost. So I still felt like I got all the like same like jitters as I would have in person. Um, but it was still fun just to like set up my ring lights, make sure like my dorm room looked kind of presentable. Um, can't let them know I'm a hot mess until I'm in. And so I had to, I don't know, recruitment was just kind of fun online. Um, this year, uh, I guess like a hint towards recruitment, we are planning in person, but of course that can always change. So hopefully it'll be a different experience being on the other side of it, even if it is online, you can bet that I will be decorating my background with some lights and some streamers and some fun decorations. <laughs> but yeah, definitely sword recruitment, even though it was online and that was like a little bit disappointing at first because in summer it was supposed to be in person, um, it was still like, a really fun experience getting to like text all the other like potential new members. Yeah, going along um, that line as well, I 
also got recruited for um, motor board. So they had this whole um, recruitment process and they send home like a candle and you have to light it with them. And like everything was supposed to be, um, well, back then it was in person. So you all meet up and then they'll lay you the the like light your candle and then you say this whole weird chant thing that is their um their um philosophy I guess but then we all did it online so literally I was just holding a lit up candle in front of my laptop it was kind of weird but um it was memorable so <laughs> and yeah I guess it would have been better that it was in person but definitely um you know they they did really well trying to like prep people like they send home all the stuff prior so that when it comes to the recruitment day everyone had what they needed they were all doing it together everyone was very involved yeah I really liked that day yeah that was an interesting experience we were all just like <laughs> we all was really awkward but that's okay um but other virtual events I did like I mentioned before the school activity board um they do like I said like they do hold they hold a lot of events so I attended those like they did um like Disney trivia game or like things along that line so if you attend those and then you get involved you get prizes and stuff like that and those went really well um a lot of people will join and stuff like that I also did um a lot of um uh, socials in my in the clubs I'm in like um honor societies like mortarboard or um my sociology honor society and even though like some of them were like smaller um RIOs and clubs, the and the socials were only like, maybe sometimes there were only like five people. Like it was still fun though because because it's such a small group, you got to um, interact with the other members more and um, get to know them better. So uh, even though it was virtual, it was still really fun and um, we we're still able to meet and learn about other people. So yeah, I would say I was super engaged with like the stuff. Um, the first week, like I made sure to go to everything because it's like, what else are you going to do? They would do like, um, like it was like speed dating, but it was like making friends like up on like the top of one of the dorms. Um, they did like uh, Jessica said, like trivia in the cafeteria. And then one of the nights they did, I think it was the first night they did like everybody go to the courtyard and like meet, meet people. And I met like the people that I talked to that night are like still the people I talk to today. Like it's, it was definitely a great way to like branch out, meet friends, and then like you meet someone and then they had maybe met someone and then you guys all meet up and go to the beach or like stuff like that. So definitely like getting involved um, through the orientation things really helped me and they were really fun also because like I know like my roommate that first night she flew in so she was like really tired and didn't want to go and I was like well like I'm not going to like let that hold me back like I, I've got to go meet people like this will be really fun. So I, just know that everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's nervous like no one's like going out there being like I'm gonna meet everybody tonight and like I have all this stuff and make all my friends like tonight and that's it like that's not how it goes like you can make friends that night and then they change and in a month you're friends with people that you didn't that didn't even show up that night so it's just important to definitely get involved and branch out so that you can just meet as many people as you can but doing it through that stuff really helped me so last year I was staying in the Halela Lima dorms which are up on East West Road um and the, the occupancy of the dorms was at like 20%. So there was barely anyone in there. And so um, one way that I got to meet people was through our weekly town hall meetings that we'd have on Zoom. Um, it's really just a way to make friends, especially during COVID when a lot of people just choose to stay in their rooms and they don't really wanna go out. Um, if they show up to the town hall meeting, it's like, oh, this person lives in my building. I'd never seen them like walk out of the building ever. So like if they show up to the meetings, it gives you an opportunity to to talk with them and get their social media. And also like, it gives you a chance to meet your RAs because sometimes you don't get to run into your RAs in person. Um, so if you make a connection with them and make friends with them, you know, they might be easier on you. And like, they might tell you about events and stuff and or free things that they're giving away. Um, so I think going to those town hall meetings whenever you can is like super important to get connected with RAs and also meet people in your dorm that you wouldn't get the chance to run into. Yes, so put yourself out there, um, join in on both in-person and virtual activities because kind of like what Lila was mentioning, some people go to some things and then something or some people go to others. So what a great opportunity to meet more people. Okay, kind of switching gears. Um, what does your normal day look like during the school year? 
whatever normal is. Honestly, I feel like I'm living a school day this summer because I am doing both summer sessions and living in the dorms and like living in uh, Hawaii for the summer. So like today I woke up, went to the gym at like 7 a.m. to try to do something, starting my morning off with like a workout and a protein shake, um, attending my classes. Um, usually I schedule like, especially in during the school year of like fall to spring, I schedule my stuff in the morning so that way I have the afternoons to like study and then at night to like go to dinners with friends. So I also find that I'm most productive um, after I eat breakfast. So putting my classes in the beginning of the day, going to maybe get lunch, maybe a little beach like afternoon. I During school year, I try to go to the beach at least like every other week. That's like how much I really like try to allow myself. And then dinner with friends, maybe a little bit studying Honestly, I study like late at night and then I go to sleep and knock out. Maybe it's like how boring my textbook is, but that's honestly like when I study. So yeah, my day starts off really productive and it ends productive. Um, for me, so like um, same thing, I would wake up early to attend my classes virtually, of course, yeah, and then after that, I would switch gears and um, I do my online job or in-person job or whatever I have laid out for that day. And then, um, so that would go kind of to six, seven. And then I'm more productive at night as well. I study at night. I can never study in the morning. Even if I leave time for it, I just like procrastinate until nighttime I'm like okay now I'll study and then so I tend to leave all my studying all my homework doing everything like that towards the nighttime and if I have any club events which tend to happen pretty regularly I have it happens after work so that's really good it like fits into my schedule perfectly and then I'll attend those eat dinner um, you know crack open the book study or procrastinate, whatever I decide to do that day, and then it repeats. Yeah, the same as Ashton D, and I, for the life of me, I can't study in the morning or afternoon, like, it has to be at night, like, I, in my head, it's like, oh, yeah, around seven, like, between, like, evening time, I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's when I'll study, because, like, like Dean said, I'll just procrastinate, I'll just hold it off till then, and I'm just like, wow, like, I should just leave it for the nighttime, because there's no point in trying to schedule it for the morning, but, um, a normal day, yeah, I I also like to schedule my classes for the morning because it just feels like, because I'm uh, like a night owl, I have more time from the afternoon to nighttime. So I like to schedule everything in the morning and then I'll schedule my work time like around it. So then, yeah, I'll typically finish around 4.30 because on-campus jobs only allow you, like during the school year at least, they only allow you to do work like 20 hours a week. So yeah, I end at 4.30 and then after that, whatever club meetings or whatever I have, I'll schedule or I'll attend them after um and then after that yeah homework yeah and then I try to leave most of like going out and stuff for the weekends and that's why I look forward to the weekends the most <laughs> I'd say my typical day is like crazy um I would say I normally like to like I'm like everyone else I like to put my classes very early in the morning so that I have a lot of time to do things that I really like to do so I'll put like like all my classes at like like I had a I think in like a eight o'clock or if 7 30 even might have been the earliest for my English class so like everyone was always really grumpy but I was like well we get out so early and then we have like the whole day this is great so yeah my normal morning would be when I was in the dorms I'd wake up my roommate's alarm would go off we'd have like the same English class she'd get up like 20 minutes before me and leave and then I'd get up and like roll out of bed five minutes before and then skate past her and she'd get so annoyed because I would like sleep in more and then get to class before her and then after that say I have a little time if you have like a gap between your classes um again campus is gorgeous so I would go to the courtyard and just like sit underneath the tree or something or just like lay out and hang out and then all my friends would like be coming back from classes or people are like just leaving because they have later classes so just be like hey what's up like talk to them and whatnot and then head to my next class and then oh I also really like breakfast so I would like use a swipe on breakfast um in the mornings because 
I like to be with people a lot, but that was like my time to like hang out and actually be by myself. So that was always fun. And then after putting the morning classes, so then I would just go to the beach or like hike or do something like that. And then normally hang out for a while. And then I'll do like um, all my homework really late at night when no one's doing anything, get all of that done, except for if I have to read. I found it really hard because with my schedule and like what I like to do is like I like to do my homework when I think that no one's doing anything so that I'm not missing out on anything. So but with reading, I've tried to do it in the morning. And uh, like Ashley said, I fall asleep and then I try and do it at night and I fall asleep. So I have to like really pick like 12 to like four and read like all these chapters. So that's that's the only bummer with my reading. I'll, I'll do that in like the middle of the day. But yeah, I like to plan everything in the morning to have free time for sure. So for me, I think it was, I, I know that I need to have a very structured day. I need to do like a, a set of like six things and make sure that I do those things every single day. So it's like, I need to make sure that I'm, that I'm eating when I need to eat because food is very important for your mind and for your muscles and everything else. And so I like to start the morning with like some form of caffeine, just because like it helps you, you know, when you wake up and and you have classes, it's just like, oh, I don't want to do any of this stuff, but at least you'll have energy to do them. If you have caffeine, you don't need it. I just, I just, I just do it. Um, and then I try to have all my classes like in the morning and then exercise right after that. Cause it's like, it'll help me de-stress. Cause I'll have these like two hour long classes or like a lab or something. And I'm like, all right, I need to like de-stress. So like exercising right after that is like a huge thing that helps me like keep myself centered during the day. Um, and then unlike everyone else, I like to do my work in the middle of the day. So like right after I work out and eat, I'll like, I'll do my work from like three to like six. Um, just because like when I start to do things that I get tired really early. So I, I try to sleep by like 10 30, maybe even earlier than that. Um, Cause my brain just doesn't function well at night unless I like really have to study that late. Um, so like whatever works for you, but for me, I think um, doing my homework and other work during the middle of the days is, is a big thing. And then, um, and then I leave time for like recreational activities after I do my homework. So like, it doesn't have to be exercise, but you can like um, FaceTime your, your friends that you're not seeing or like make time to do something that um, like, positive that's something new so like if you want to start playing an instrument or like watch videos or make videos um, you can do that as well um, and then one rule I normally follow is like being an English major like a lot of the time my best ideas will just come into my head randomly so like whenever those ideas spring into my head I have to start writing them down then it, it's not like like sometimes it'll be in the morning, sometimes it'll be in the afternoon, sometimes it'll be like, I'll wake up in the middle of the night, I'll be like, oh, I have an idea for this paper. And so I can get those like five or six pages down at a random time. So I don't have to do that. Like I'm not forced to do them when I don't have any ideas. And then another rule that I follow is finishing my work at least an hour before I go to bed. Because when I'm thinking about a lot of things, when I'm trying to sleep, it's not, it's not healthy. And like, it prevents you from sleeping and then you're up until like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And then you have to wake up again the next day at like eight o'clock. So I think um, giving yourself adequate time to like cool down and rest and let your body rest is like super important. I think everyone should do it. Yes, super good point. So know your priorities, know when you are at your best, especially um, I am like the others where I do fall asleep when I read. So just knowing like a lot of in the day, right? Or drink a coffee while you're at it too. So um, super good points. Definitely. Um, I hope folks are, you know, listening and taking your tips seriously. But I know Jessica and Julian have your um, OLW coming up. So if you folks have to head out, um, you can go ahead and prepare. Um, and then we'll just finish off these questions. Um, okay. So who or what has helped you transition into college? So in Greek life, you get a family. So you have a big and a little. 
um, and this family can expand to like grand bigs, grand littles. My family is like huge, like the head of it was like a fifth year from a year ago and we're still close. So having this like really supportive family um, definitely helped me like guide into uh, like college since they're all like at least a year older than me. My own big, I met her through recruitment and not only did she help me transition to college because she had a car and so it's easier to buy a lot of stuff at Target when you have a car and don't have to take the bus, but the bus is great because there's never parking in Waikiki. Um, but she was just someone that was like able to give me advice and she was able to tell me about like her time as a freshman when things were in person and she was like, um, we would like be on FaceTime with my mom and then one time my mom told me like, yeah, I feel safe like with you being all the way in Hawaii um, when I'm in California because you have your big to like look after you and to really just like guide you through and honestly only a big is like the first best friend I made in college and I'm so happy to have her. Um, I would definitely say uh, having my roommate was like really nice just because or like even if it's just a close friend that you make your first day or whatever like um, I'm I really love like meeting new people it's one of my like favorite things to do but it was nice to have someone that I could go sit in the cafeteria with or go up to a group of people sitting down like just having someone by her side even if she wasn't really like comfortable saying things like I was and it was nice that like she was even just standing there like even if she's not doing much like it was just nice to be able to walk up with someone and be like oh like this is me and this is her like these are our majors where do you live like all the like normal questions that people ask so it was definitely um nice to have her to do stuff or say I wanted to go to the beach but I didn't want to go by myself like it was really nice transition to just have your friends because being so far away from home it's nice like like with um Ashley Sorority like your friends are family and like when something happens or like my car needs to be jumped like I'm calling them like I can't call my parents like there's a six hour time difference sometimes so I'm like hey I'm on the side of the road like I need some help and like everyone like is so quick to jump to like help you or like be there or literally just do anything for you so it's really nice that um everyone understands that that it is like a community and a family so definitely friends are very important yeah I mean I completely agree that um your friend group is is like a family and they're going to help you out um, with whatever you need but I think for me, like my first friend group that I met um, coming to UH was a lot more of a life lesson rather than like a community because it was real up and down um, with our friend group. And, you know, I just like I felt obligated to hang out with them and spend time with them because they're the first people that I met. So that's like one thing that I could tell you is like you don't have to fall in love with the first people that you meet. Like you're going to meet great people your entire your entire college career. So you don't have to, you don't have to feel like, oh, I met these people right away and they really ride with me. So I'm just going to hang out with them all the time. Um, and for me, I didn't really learn that right away. And so I just ended up in a lot of situations where I was just left like unhappy and not really feel like I was part of a community. But I think for me, what got me through that first year was um, like my friends and family that would call me a couple of times a week and they would always like, they would always check in on me and see what's going on and make sure that I, like my head was level and that I was like centered. And so like they helped me my first year. And then after that, um, I met a, uh, a couple of new friends because I would play basketball at the park uh, next to campus. Um, and so I'd go there every few days. And so I met a group of really cool guys um, that also go to UH, but are uh, a year older than me. But I think they were the ones that taught me that like, like th there's real, there's like real people out there that like can, relate to you and connect with you and they're not necessarily the ones that you find like in your dorms or on campus or like at a party or whatever um so like your community will find you you don't necessarily have to go out there and force it super great point okay we are coming to time so we'll ask probably one or two more questions um but um i lost my thought okay how has college helped you become more independent honestly just being this far away from home like over 2,000 miles away from home um, has definitely made me become more independent i like have to book my own dmv appointments and like have to go and google like my own like insurance stuff just registering a car from out of state 
made me the most independent in a three month span ever. <laughs> and even in that time, I got into a little um, traffic collision. So I had to become even more independent then with like handling um, that whole situation with my insurance and the other person involved. So just being away from my parents um, and learning that if something needs to get done, I have to do it definitely helped. <laughs> Yeah, I would say just like any college experience, just like things happen and things pop up that you're kind of like, okay, this is what we're doing. We're dealing with this now. Like one time I spilled like cranberry juice all over my roommate's like white comforter and all this stuff. And I had to like call up a friend and be like, well, I don't know how to like use bleach, but like I've got, I've got to learn right now. So like, can you come over and help me? And like, so that was like something I battery I just came back and my car was dead and there's no rental cars and my parents were like we need to get around so I learned how to put a battery in the dad showed me um parking ticket never had to pay that before I've gotten a couple so like I had to do that like I've definitely learned that I read way more directions now than I ever did because it was always just like oh my parents have done this before like I'll just ask them and they'll summarize so now I'm like really like looking into things and reading directions and making sure I'm doing it like correctly like even just like cooking my own meal or like, like going like places and just like using things that are, oh, pumping my own gas. Like I got a car and then I was like, how do I pump my own gas? Cause I'm from New Jersey. So I was like, okay, this is great. Like I finally got the car, but like, I don't even know how I do this. <laughs> just doing stuff like that, that I'm like not accustomed to was like, like really interesting for me. Like simple things like learning how to ride a moped, like stuff like that was just I definitely am like, yeah, I feel older now. They're like mm, paying for my tickets and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, just stuff like that, that, random things that pop up. I don't know how I could follow that because that was hilarious. Um, I think the during the first COVID lockdown, I learned a lot of things about being like an adult and being in college and being on my own. It's like I everyone was just gone. There was like one person left on my floor and like 20 people total in the building so I didn't really see anyone. And so it really just taught me like to grow up fast because you're just, you're really just on your own and you have stuff to do. You got classes to do. You got, you got places to be, you got to go to work, but like, there's no one there. So you got to be able to function like on your own and do everything by yourself. Um, Cause I didn't really get the upper, like get the opportunity to, to like reach out to people because everyone was gone. Um, so like one thing was like planning, planning things with other people was something that I never did like as in a like a group setting like I would never be the one to like plan events or like be the one to like lead the team to do something but then going off to college it's like you really have to take initiative because if you don't do it and that no one else wants to do it then it's just not going to get done especially like with group projects especially like if you don't take the lead and no one else wants to take the lead then the project's just not gonna get finished. Um, and then also like talking to supervisors and adults and professors was something that I was like dreaded in high school. I'd never wanted to talk to my teachers cause like I was afraid of office hours and I was just afraid of talking to people older than me on the phone. And so that was one thing like, like I had to, I had to do it. You have to do it. You gotta talk to your doctor. You gotta talk to your supervisors. You gotta talk to your boss. And so like, and that's how you like, and that's the only way you're going to be able to make it later on is because there's always going to be people older than you that are above you, like in your job. So like you, you need to be able to like talk to them and connect with them and not make it look like nervous or scary, you know? So I think that that was like super important for me. Yeah. Super good points. You have to take initiative. You can't be scared to talk to people who are older than you. Um, and make sure you're communicating, not just with your professors, um, your TAs, but also like your family members, like if you're struggling or whatever, making sure that, you know, like you're asking for help when you need it. Um, and that's true, I think across age, like how old you are or whatever. Um, but we are at time. So I do wanna be conscientious of everyone's um, time, especially if folks are gonna go into the OLWs. So um, as a reminder, OLWs are happening today. So go hang out with your orientation leader. Um, but we hope you found um, today's session helpful. We are recording it. So it's gonna be uploaded to the Visit Days program. Um, and if you have questions, you can reach out to your OL or you can email nrwo at hawaii.edu.
Um, and we're here to support you in any way that we can. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much for being here with us. Bye.